Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, would like to give all praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashem, Rukakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS. The ones who taught us this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth, pushing this gospel in all sincerity in his last days. Shalom also to the few sisters, Aqua, who are sincerely seeking this truth. It's the GMS Italy camp, and we're out here, you know, to prophesy the downfall of this kingdom run by the wicked, you know. But today we're going to be speaking about the Israelites and the Gentiles, because, you know, when I came into this trove, you know, I started understanding how Christianity has, you know, done so much damage to our people, man, you know, with the doctrine that they teach, and how this, this doctrine has really taken away their common sense of thinking, you know, but now, being in this trove, and the more I go in this trove, you know, I get to see more and more that, you know, the people are really dumb, man, people are really sottish. Just like the book of um, Isaiah, the first chapter. Let's get the book of Isaiah, the first chapter. Then after that, you get the um, book of Hosea, the eighth chapter. It speaks of lack of knowledge. You know, Christianity has really caused, you know, a fatal damage to our people. And they, don't, they, don't, they no longer understand to discern, you know. They don't, they don't seek out words. They don't, they don't search words, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The earth knoweth his honor, and the earth his master's grief. But Israel do not know, my people do not consider. Get the one in Hosea. Okay, the ox knoweth its master, its owner, and the ass its master's grief. These are the two most, you know, kind of foolish animals, you know, but they know their master's grief. They understand things better than the Israelites, man. Israelites have been drinking too much of that Babylon Jews, Christianity, that has got them brainwashed. And now when you try to explain simple things on, on the word Gentile, when they hear the word Gentile, they just go crazy, man. They just go, they go nuts, you know. Christianity has always taught them that, you know, salvation is for everyone. But, <laughs> but then there is no way it's written in the Bible, you know. Now they try to take the word Gentile, they try to incorporate all the rest of the nations into it. In which, yes, normally the word Gentile could mean the one the other nations it could also mean the israelites okay so today through the spirit and power of the most high yahweh shimmy Shai, we're going to bring this we're going to bring out this topic because i've been getting some comments on a video we did some last week you know that got so much views and we'll be getting some comments you know people saying all kinds of stupidness you know no the gentiles this the camps are false and all these things hey just like we said in that video we are not begging anyone to come into the camp, man. Our duty is that of teaching you this word so we can get rid of that, your blood from our hands, man. If you take it, good. If you don't take it, that's good, you know. And according to the scriptures, we know that many are called but few are chosen. We know that the road that leads to life is a narrow road and only few people are going to find it. So we are not surprised when we get all these things, you know, you can read. Yeah, this is the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, since thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Can so you see, the people, the people they've rejected the, the, the sound doctrine. They've rejected sound doctrine. They've rejected understanding. You know. In which this understanding you can only get it through the spirit and power of the most high Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. You know, if you are humble, just like the book of James, the first and the first chapter, the fifth verse tells you, if you lack knowledge, you should pray to the most high Yahweh Hashem Yahushai who gives. You know, if you're humble about this thing, you know, you seek the most high Yahweh with all your heart, this knowledge and truth is going to be given to you. But the people refuse to do this, you know. They just want to give their own opinion on this on this doctrine remember what the book of um is this second peter the first chapter the 20th verse it says there is no personal interpretation can you get that scripture real quick you know there is no personal interpretation to the to the scriptures you know these scriptures speaks of a certain people it speaks of a line from the beginning you know how can the most i have a covenant with the certain people then end up 
including other people who doesn't have the covenant with him. I think it's um, first or second Peter, the first chapter, the twentieth verse. First Peter, try first Peter or second Peter. The first chapter, the twentieth verse. No, then it is second Peter. Okay, second Peter. You know, because lately everyone wants to translate this truth, you know, according to their own way. They have different kinds of interpretation, but there's just one interpretation to this truth. And that interpretation comes through the power and spirit of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai. You can't just interpret these scriptures the way you like. And the, the, the wicked thing about these people is they don't study to, to, to make themselves to, to um, just like the scripture says, in which we're going to get this one. Then we're going to the second book of um, Timothy, the second chapter and six, uh, 15th verse. First. Yeah, Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 says, Peter. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. There is no prophecy of the scripture which is of private interpretation. And this is what these Christians do. And this is the venom that they give to our people, man. This is the wine that they give to our people that got them drunk. They no longer know how to discern between what's right and what's wrong. You know, you're not coming out in the video. You know, they've turned this thing to a perfect, uh, to a personal kind of thing. You know, they have their own doctrines. They'll teach you about hell. They'll teach you about Satan. You know stabbing the people in hell and all that thing in which the bible never spoke about all these things they tell you that there was a war in heaven you know the angels were rebelling against the most high and his angels you know they teach you things that are doctrines of men philosophies of men you know and why do they fall for all these things because they don't make their researches you know the most high has actually given them a blind eyes let's get the book of um second timothy um the second chapter the 15th verse Yeah, this is um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. Can. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved, a workman knowing what's right and what's wrong. But the people don't do this thing. They just, they just regurgitate whatever that's been given to them in this church. You know, we were once part of these churches, and we once followed these doctrines and we saw that these doctrines were leading to, to death, man. These doctrines make no sense. And the Most High has seen, uh, the Most High has actually given us the spirit to wake up from that slumber, you know. So now let's start off with the topic of, um, well, anyway, before we get that, um, get that scripture, it says um, they will not give it to sound doctrine. You know, because we are not surprised because it's been prophesied that these people are not going to give heed to sound doctrines, man. They will go after doctrines of men, doctrines of devils. You know? I think Timothy. Ah. Yeah, this is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. It says, For a time we come when they will not endure sound doctrine okay. but go on but after their own loss shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears so a time will come where they will, they will, they will not give heed to sound doctrines man you know a time will come that they will heap up teachers giving heed to itching ears man and <laughs> you see our apostles always tell us that if you don't know the history you can't understand the mystery, you know? So these Christians, they've proven themselves from time to time that they are not students of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai because they don't check things up. Now, let's start from the beginning. This, um, you know, this thing has to do with seed, a lineage, you know? And that lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know? And Jacob's name became Israel, okay? And from ends from, from Jacob came the 12 tribes of Israel. And these 12 tribes of Israel are those who had this covenant with the Most High, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. The Most High had 
things to do only with the, with the 12 tribes of Israel, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's get the book of um, Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, the 26th verse. Okay? Jeremiah 33rd. 33, 33, 26. Huh? Jeremiah 33, 26. Okay? This thing has to do with a seed. Okay? And that thing has never changed because the most high Yahweh Bashem Shai is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never changes. Okay? Yes, verse 26. Yeah, this is Jeremiah 33, 26. It said, Then I will cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Okay, so the most I, it's the most I saying this because why? We have, we have actually broken that covenant that we have with the most I, Yahweh Shimei Shai. There was a covenant that was sealed with blood. The most I got angry and he said he was going to cast away our seed. You know, but in that same scripture, it's telling you that he was going to have mercy at the end. Okay, he was going to have mercy at the end. Now, regarding the, the covenant that was bet between us and the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai, you can get the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter, the 8th verse. Okay, you can start from 6. You can start from yeah. 6. This is Ezra 24, started from 6. And Moses took, took half of the blood and put it in the basin, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and what, read what is what is the book of the covenant the laws and oh. the statues man this is this bible that we have today okay read on and he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people and they said all that the lord has said sorry in what audience of what people israel israel because if you go to the first um if you go to the first verse let me read it okay read the first verse yeah. please uh, Ezra 24 1 he said and he said unto Moses come up into the Lord thou and Aaron Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and worship you after all okay so you see he was speaking to the congregation of Israel because this was after they were saved from from the captivity of the Egyptians okay so bear in mind that this is we're just speaking of how the contract was sealed now if you write if you sign a contract you know in the ancient times they would use uh, they would melt wax on a stamp and they use the wax to seal the, the, the to seal the contract okay or if not they they, they, they make a, a punch in their in their skin and they use the blood to seal the contract you know some other time they'll give a hand a right hand to shake and they will seal the contract so now we are actually selling a contract to the Most High Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. That yeah. contract was between the Most High Yahweh and the sons of Israel. Uh, uh, Speak on if you uh, have. Like what the brother is saying, in this in these days, in our own in our own time, you know, the way they sign say contract they sign. You know, they sign it. So that's what he was saying. So you can understand. In these days, sealing the contract is signing. You know, when you have agreement with a company, you know, at the last agreement you have to sign. That's, that's, it means we agree. The both parties agree. Because if there's no agreement, there will be no signing. You know, that, was, that is what the blood represents. But and remember, the brother right here cannot sign a contract, okay, with maybe a company or whatever, then I present myself for him. Yeah. It's not done because I don't have that contract. So it is he who signed the contract, you know, that follows the rules of that contract. So this, speaking of this contract, it's the covenant that was between the sons of Israel and the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Don't forget this, because this is going to be instrumental in this lesson. Speaking on the Gentiles, read on. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. So, and they said... Sorry, and the book of the covenant, now from there we'll go back this. Just go to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, you go to the um, 64th verse. Okay, because this book of the covenants were laws. Now you can go read from the beginning, because when these laws were given to the sons of Israel, you can write. You can read the first. Um, let, me, let me read it. 
read the 15 and okay no before you read the 15 read the first verse to show you that it's speaking to the sons of israel okay yeah yeah to show that he's speaking to the sons of israel yeah this is deuteronomy one on one it said this be the words which mercy spake unto all israel on this side jordan in the wilderness in the plain over against the red sea between Paran and tough and leban so you see this is the word now go to quick real quick back this is the word that moses spoke to the sons of israel okay so moses the congregation he had if you're reading your bible real well is the sons of israel and the sons of israel are consisted of the 12 tribes that we have here you know who are the so-called negroes native americans and the latinos who have been dispersed around the world and we're going to give you the proof that they've been dispersed okay so read on yeah if you have anything to add you know you can jump yeah. in yeah i wanted to uh, add, uh, go, go 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 15, go 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 then go down to yeah yeah it's good verse. just so this is deuteronomy 28 verse 15. so this is the class of the of the contract you know so deuteronomy 28 15 said but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god so it observe. shall come to pass if you breach this contract if yeah. you break this contract this covenant in which we were reading about in the book of Exodus, in which we're going to go back. Okay, read on. Yep. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe to do all his commandments and his, and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So you see, if we breach that contract, now, before you go to the, the, the last verse, go to um, Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, and you read the, the, uh, the sixth and the seventh verse, or you can start from the fifth verse where it says, Behold, okay? Because, you know, this contract is a contract in which was supposed to exalt us above all the nations. Now, speaking of racism, now if we get the, the, the definition of racism, please get the definition of racism, okay? Because some people are speaking about racism and all these things. The most I how about Shemi is the first racist. And people don't understand the meaning of words. So they get they get they get emotional when we speak about the most high loving only Israel and choosing Israel over the rest of the nation. People get they get emotional, you know. They call you racist, you know. One of the comments that I got was uh, regarding uh, uh, that we are racist, man, that our doctrine is racist. Then if you're saying that our doctrine is racist, you have to say the most high Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is racist. And truly the most high Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is the first racist, man. Because he has chosen a, a, a seed of people. Now people don't understand the meaning of words. They get emotional about things. Because they don't understand the meaning of words. Now the wicked that are in power today, they've taken that word according to their own wickedness. They've turned everything to wicked translations, man. What's the meaning of racist according to Google? Yeah. Uh, the word racist means prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Now uh, this is the new, this is the new, this is the new, uh, what do you call it? Go to etymology, let, let etymology. Just, let, let me check race first. No, not race. Just go to etymology. Uh, yeah. Etymology. Because... Now, Esau has started changing all different kinds of definitions of things, you know. He has started taking definitions, just like I said. He changes them because of his wicked ways, man. The so-called white man, Esau, Edom, that's in power. Now, if you go to the etymology of racism... No, no, the second one. Okay, now you see this is the etymology of racism. Okay, race racism is actually you know divided into two parts. You have race in which you know race is talking about a group of people. Then ism is something else in which we're going to get the meaning. Okay. Okay. 
Now read the definition of racism. This is uh, racism from etymology. etymology. It says, by 1928, in common use from 1935, originally in a European context, racial supremacy. This is, this is in European context, it's telling you. It says it's racial supremacy, okay? As a doctrine, the theory that human characteristics and abilities are determined, are by, determined race. by race, okay? Yeah. And it says that it's, See, it's a theory yeah. that human characteristics are determined by superiority. And that's what the so-called white man has done to us, you know? They've, 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 they've labeled themselves the white people and they've labeled us the black people, which black means, you know, gets the meaning of ism. I-S. Can. So now we can understand that the, 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 um, the, the word race in which we're going to get first, sorry, just get the word race first. Then you come to ism race because it's that word racism is a bringing together of two words race and ism okay uh, this is the word race say art of running let old english also race race number two read here Rest number two, you say people of common descent. So you see the that meaning of race, means. it means people of common descent. Yeah. Okay? You have the most high created different races of people. You know, starting from um starting from um Japheth, Ham, and um and Sham. Okay? Let, let me get one example. In which the lineage of, of, of the sons of Israel came down from, from Sham, okay? So this is what race means, you know, it says a common, what's the meaning? Race number two. It says a people of common descent, okay? Yeah. And it says, sorry, it says a race. It says common ancestry, okay? It says a lineage, a family. That is the meaning of race, okay? Yeah. Now, I want to get... Can, can. Now, let me get the um, example of race, you know in the bible to show that races or race is actually in the bible the most is actually the first he divided know. the people man yeah he you was know? the first uh, the first being to separate to bring in race you know so this is um deuteronomy 32 verse 8 he said when the most high divided the nations you see divided that means separate when the most I divided, what now you see, people don't really people get emotional about things. Yeah. When the most I divided. divided the nations, it didn't bring everybody together the way oh. the so called white man is trying to bring us together today. Oh. The most I divided the nations. Then read on. When the most I divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam. So you see, the most I. It divided to the nations different inheritance yeah. and it is said that the most high has given these idols and all these different gods to the other nations yeah. okay then he said he separated the sons of adam now we do, have already done lessons on this telling you how it is a legacy you know before we became called the sons of israel we were first known as the sons of adam before then we were known as the sons of the most high yahweh shemi Shai also known as the sons of God the so-called fallen angels these are these Israelites man you know now in order to get a um, deeper understanding on this just go down to the to this um, through the channel I did a, a three three video series on this you know explaining to you what really went down in the Garden of Eden the sons of the Most High you know the Nephilims the Anunnaki and all these things so you should go check out that video if you want a um, deeper understanding on this so you see the sons of Israel, before they became known as sons of Israel, they were sons of Adam. Yeah. Read on. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. He set the bounds of the people according to the... Come on, come on, man. But, you... Hold on, but it makes sense today we have nations. You know, we don't have only one, one nation in, the, in this world. <laughs> Even 
today you have Italy, you have Germany, you have this. It makes sense. You know, Mosa separates so many things, separate nations, he created nations. Now, it, what did the so called white man do? The so called white man started, you know, creating different nations that are different, man. Yeah, exactly. Started giving them different names, in which this is a cause, man. The Most High speaks against this. This is, um, get the book of um, Deuteronomy, um, Deuteronomy, the 27th chapter and the 17th verse. You know, the Most High speaks against this thing, you know. This man, he changes the boundaries, you know, he creates new nations. Why? He's trying to hide the fact of the sons of Israel and he's trying to hide the fact of who he is, man. This is Esau, the enemy of the Most High Yahweh Shemi Shai, the enemy of the sons of Israel. Yeah, this is Deuteronomy 27, verse 26. It says, Cause be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. So, cursed be he. Is it? 17. Uh, 17. So, it's good that you read that because the Most High said, Cursed be he who does not keep this commandment, man. You know? Who does not keep the laws of this, of this, um, of this contract? And which we're going back to, to his, uh, Exodus 24. Okay, read. Deuteronomy 27, 17. Cause be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cause be he that removeth the people's landmark. What has the so-called white man done? He has removed all these landmark after the Most High has chosen and separated his people. Now let's get the meaning of ism. Ism. You know, we already spoke about race. Race is a family of people, a family of nations, you know. So the word racism comes from two words. The compound word, is that what you call a compound word? You know, when you bring in two words together, race and ism. Now, let's check out the meaning of ism. It says, Tan, this one. Okay, ism, the word forming elements, making norms. Implying a practice. So it is a it's a word practice forming system. element. We mean which means it is added to another word, okay? Yeah. It says which implying, it says implying a practice, system, system. doctrine. You know? <laughs> yeah. So you see, when you bring the two words together, it's talking about a people who follow a certain system and a doctrine, man. That's the meaning of racist. But the so-called white man is so Edom now is trying to change everything due to the wickedness he has done to we so-called Israelites, the so-called blacks, the so-called Native Americans and the Latinos, you know. Now, the first racist is going to be the most high Yahweh Hashem Shai. Because now if you go to the Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, like I said, you read from verses, verse 5 of verse 6 down to 7. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Behold. I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my power has com commanded me, that you should do so in the land where you go to possess it. Verse 6. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, who shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise. It's a wise and understanding people. So you see, the laws and the statutes. Is there any other scripture that says um, the Most High has chosen you over all other yeah, nations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that scripture. You know, this is this is the laws and the statutes in which the Most High has given to the sons of Israel to distinct them from the rest of the nations. It is clear. Okay. The Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. We are an holy people. What's the meaning of holy? Holy means set aside. Okay? The sons of Israel are a holy people unto the Most High, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Read on. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. The Most High, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, has chosen us, Israel, to be a special people unto himself. You can't go about that, man. You know, the Most High has chosen a race of people, which is the Israelites, you know, and you need to be these people by blood, okay? Yeah. Read on. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth, 
Definitely so you see, I broke all the people that are upon the face of the earth. So the first racist is the most high Yahweh Hashem Shai. Because he chose a certain people above the rest of all people. You know? And the reason why he chose those people is to govern the rest of the people and put them in, in, in the line, man. And that's going to happen in the kingdom to come. The Israelites are going to be the kings and the priests, the commanders of this of the of the world, man, of this earth. And all the rest of the nations need to do according to what they say. You know? We just get that quick precept because we have lots of precepts, then we'll go to under Deuteronomy 14, verse 2. He said, For thou art an holy people unto thy Lord thy power. We and are the, a holy people, we are a set aside people unto yeah. the most high Yahweh Shem Shai. Read on. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people the unto most, himself. Listen, what's the meaning of peculiar? The most high has chosen us to be his people, man. You know, he hasn't chosen the rest of the nations. Get Psalm 147, please. Peculiar people. I mean, that's not for everybody. It's not for everybody, man. So you see, we are saying all this to let you understand that the Most High has chosen a set of people and a seed. Okay, it has to do with seed. Then from here, we'll take it on to start showing you how we went into captivities. Okay, and how we started becoming called, how, how we became Gentiles. Yep. We don't. This is Psalm 147 verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. The most high Yahweh Shem Yahushai has showed his word unto Jacob, his laws and statutes unto Israel. There it's letting you know that it is a thing of seed, man. Yeah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, and what is that word? Speak the up. law, statutes, and commandments. You know, that is what may separate us from the rest of the world. The law is not given to everybody. You know? So you got to know the history first. You can't just open Matthew and start uh, making a doctrine out of, you know, you don't understand what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, that's what the Christians do. They make a doctrine out of, um, of Galatians, yeah. out of where it says, um, Acts, where it says the, uh, the Greeks Greek and, and, the Jews. and Jews, in which we're going to touch, you know? They make yeah. doctrines of that because they don't, they don't make deep researches, man. Yeah. If you they don't are such children. They if, don't know the history. If you don't understand what is happening in Psalm, in Deuteronomy, in Exodus, you can't understand what is happening in Matthew, in John, in Luke. You know, because what is happening in Matthew, John, and Luke is a prophecy that happened way back that come to pass. You know? Don't worry, we're going to show you all this. So, yeah, continue. He has not done so with any nation. And as for his judgment... Read, read from beginning again, sorry. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He has not done so with any nation. So you see... It is clear that the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai, what he has done with the sons of Israel, he has never dealt so with any other nation. Yeah. Okay? So the laws and statutes were given unto Israel to make them separate from the rest of the nations. Okay? But what happened? We broke that seal. Now, going back to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, you know, you, you read the verse 15 which were the implications of what's going to happen if we break these laws and statutes, okay? The brother said if we break these laws, there were causes that were going to come upon us. That's in the 15th verse. Yep. Now we roll down to the last verse, uh, last 60, 60 or 64. whatever, 64. Yeah, Deuteronomy 28, 64, it says, and the, Lord that, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other so the most high yahweh shem yahushai is going to scatter us amongst all people man yeah if we break all if we these, break laws. these laws yeah okay but did we break the laws yes, yes. <laughs> so you see the most high scattered us amongst all people now we can get according to this um seed let's get the book of romans um the ninth chapter we can read from the third verse to the 14th verse to just give you an understanding of how this has to do with the seed and how the Most High hasn't abandoned its seed, okay? Then we now go into how we, 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 we were scattered amongst the, the, the nations. Romans 9. Now you can read from verse 3, from verse 3. Now this is the Apostle Paul speaking, in which Apostle Paul, his duty, okay, the, the, the assignment the Most High Yahweh Shai gave him was that 
of going to wake up the Israelites that became Gentiles. Okay? And that, how did the Israelites become Gentiles? That have been scattered. That have, that have been scattered. Just okay? like the prophecy says, that is his duty. His duty is now to go on to them, to go and tell them, look, wake up. You are an Israelite. Look, you don't supposed to live like this. You know? You don't supposed to, you know, uh, be like these people. You are separate. You know, so you this is chosen the people to remind them of the laws, man. Yes, this is the duty of Apostle Paul to remind them of the contract that had been. Yeah, and now speaking on this, it's just like I and the brother we're living here in Italy. The brother gives birth to a child here in Italy. You know, his child is going to be known as an Italian. Now, guess what? If the son and the, the brother we are of origin of Nigeria, okay, his son becomes an Italian. His son marries another another Italian. And they totally forget about their origin, you know? Yeah. The sons that are going to be born, they will believe that they are Italians, man. Yeah. They wouldn't even know of, the, of their origin. And this is exactly what happened to the sons of Israel. Well, read. They become Italians, you know? <laughs> the sons of Israel became Italians. <laughs> and that was, that was through the spirit, man. Yeah. Because these people, they also bug out when you speak of uh, Cornelius. Exactly. Cornelius was an Israelite, you know? In which that's another topic we, we're going to touch on it if the, the most high Yahweh Shemiah Shai permits. Yeah. Because this lesson has too much things in which we're going to see if we can squeeze everything in this lesson. Speak. This is Romans chapter 9, start from 3. For I could wish that myself were a cause. This is the Apostle Paul. He said he wished that himself was a cause. Listen. From Hamashiach, for my brother, for my brother, my kinsman, according to the flesh. So you see, Paul, the Apostle Paul, we know that he is of the tribe of Benjamin, yeah. okay? And he also had the Roman citizenship, okay? Yep. He had the Roman citizenship, but he was of the roots of um, Benjamin, okay? Yeah. The lineage of Benjamin was a Benjamite. So now he's speaking, who are his brethren? His brethren are the Israelites according to the flesh. Now read. Okay, Speak on. Me. Let me just break a little bit down. Like what the brother just said. He said, Apostle Paul have a Roman citizenship. Like, uh, I think in Acts. I think, was it Acts 15? Yeah, somewhere? yeah, yeah. So, somewhere in Acts, Apostle Paul called himself a Roman. Now, let me break it down. This is what it means. Like here in this country, in Italy, if you arrive here, maybe if you have lived here for like 10 years, 10 years up, they will give you, you are entitled to have an um, Italian, citizenship. Italian citizenship. Just like me. Yeah, just like okay. this man. This man has lived here for, for a very long time. You know, he is entitled to have a citizenship of an Italian. You know, once he got that uh, uh, passport, I think what that's what they, they, they call it. They call it, it the passport, they the They call it passport. You know? He will not become an Italian. He has the right just like an Italian. This, that is what it means. But does, does it mean naturally that he's, he's an Italian? No. No. <laughs> you see, that's, that's what it means, Gentiles, the Romans. When you hear Apostle Paul written to the uh, Romans, it means... It means the, the Israelites that were in, Roman, or in Rome. Yeah, the saints. When he, when he, when, when he writes to the, to the Ephesians, those are the Israelites that were in Ephesus. Exactly. When he wrote to the Philippians, those were the Israelites that were in Philippi, man. Exactly. Come on. Verse 4, Romans 9, 4, it says, Who are Israelites? You say, he wish he was a cause. Yeah. Okay, for his brethren's sake, who are they? For his kinsmen, okay, yeah. according to the flesh, yeah. it says, Who are Israelites, Israelite. okay, to whom pertain the adoption? To who pertain the adoption? Now, the word adoption has been translated into this modern world yeah. where you know you can just pick a child mm. from nowhere and you and you and you adopt them back, yeah. you know, but it's not done. No, that but, adoption but, is only for those who, 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 who you see. The, the Bible speaks of reconciliation, okay? The Bible speak of, um, speaks of grafting in. Yeah. Now, reconciliation, you can only recon uh, um, reconciliate with someone who you had something, you had to, something deal to deal with, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. You can't reconciliate with someone that, you, that, that he didn't offend you. Yeah. I can't just go and meet a man that I don't know and tell him, you need to reconciliate with me. <laughs> you need to reconciliate. That's madness, man. And what the, the, you see, there is a science between grafting, in which you know there is a tree of um, of olives. Okay, you can take off a branch, 
okay, that is healthy, you can take off a branch, or maybe that's not healthy, cut you cut it off, then you take another branch, you tie a rope to hold it, and you see that that branch grows together with that branch. But this thing cannot be done with an uh, olive tree and apple. It can't be done with any other plant. It has to be of the same plant. Okay, this is the word grafting in. So you see, people don't understand these things. They just go all way crazy, man. You know? There is, there is a scripture that tells you that I have planted a vine. That is the book of um, Isaiah. The most I has planted a vine, an olive Jeremiah. vine. Jeremiah, sorry. Get that scripture real quick before we go into this thing. But that vine has become a wild vine. That is speaking of the sons of Israel. How did they become vile? Because they were carried away into different nations because due to the to the to the to the um, to the breaking of the laws they were carried away in which we're going to touch all this they were carried away into various parts of the world and they started following the the, the, the ways of the lives of these people where they find themselves that's what made the Israelites become Gentiles you know but these Bogart Christians you know you see Christianity is more addictive and more more destructive than crack man you know, someone that has been taking crack for many years, it can be taken to a rehab and get its sense back. But that is going to be a miracle for a Christian to be rehabbed, man. You see? Just write wild vine. It's here, but I don't know this very fast. I know it's Jeremiah 11. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. Ooh. Uh, later I will still get some a little more from from um, from Romans 11. No, no, no. Just write. Jeremiah 2:21. Ah. <laughs> Your brain is switch. Jeremiah 2:21. I say 11. Oh man. That's not good, and eh? you're forgetting your precepts. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly like that. So please bear with us. We're getting a precept. No. <sighs> okay. Now. Now this is the book of um. Hold on. This is the book of Jeremiah, the second chapter. Okay. Now read from the first first two verses to show that you know it's speaking of Israel Jeremiah 2 verse 1 moreover the word of the Lord came to me saying go go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem Say, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem okay Jerusalem was a people before it's a, it's a nation okay it was a people before it became a nation okay and you know that this is speaking of the sons of Israel now let's go to the point Real quick. All right. Yes, sir. Verse 21. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, woolly, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerated, huh? degenerate plant? You see, the Most High has planted us a noble vine. Yep. Okay? But we became a degenerate plant. Degenerate plant of a strange, of a strange vine. vine unto me. So we became a, we became a degenerate vine of a strange vine, you know? We became wild. You see, we became wild because we started following the rest of the nations in which we were warned not to follow, you know? Yeah, for example now, you know, maybe we, we have, as we, we are living here in Italy, we have a child. What do you think our child will do, how their character will become? They are going to the school of the Gentiles. They have friends of the Gentiles, so they will behave like, you know, so th this is what it means. Though we are not keeping the law, assuming maybe their parents here, they are not keeping the law, they are not following the true law, the true custom and tradition. 
then they have to follow the ways of the where they are living. This is what it means. And we are not supposed to be that way. We have a way. You know, being an Israelite is, 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 is uh, um, it's a lifestyle. You know? It's a heritage, man. Yeah, it's a heritage. It's a lifestyle. We have a lifestyle. We don't live like every other people. This is where, why we are separate from the rest of the world. But people don't get this, you know? Turn, 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 turn. So this is what it means by being a Gentile. Being strange. We have become strange to our own ways. The ways our Lord gave us, the status and commandment. This is what makes us Gentiles. You know? Now, speaking of the scattering of the sons of Israel, we know that this has happened in different ways. At the beginning, you know, we, we, after the death of King Solomon, Israel separated, okay? We're not going to go into all this because it's going to take infinity to, to just, you know, in order to understand this, you really need to pray to the Most High Yahweh Shemiah Oshai to give you the spirit, the understanding. Then you go into the scriptures, you read, you know. Now, the house of Israel was separated during after the death of King Solomon. It now became two, you know. It had, um, who's calling? It had, uh, it had a northern, um, a northern and a southern, um, southern kingdom. kingdom, okay. Now, so Israel, you add Israel, Israel Judah. and Judah, and that word Judah, that's where you get, where they speak about the Jews, okay? When Yahweh Shai came, he came to the Jews, you know, who are the Israelites of the Southern Kingdom. Now, the Southern Kingdom is contained of three major um, tribes, which is Benjamin, Levi, and Judah, okay? Yeah, the, then the tenth kingdom have the, already yes gone to uh, captivity. It has already gone. That is speaking of um, the book of Second Ezra, the thirteenth chapter. Okay, now let's speak a little on the scattering of the sons of Israel. Let's get the book of um, let's get the book of um, Ezekiel, the thirty-sixth chapter, the nineteenth verse. So remember, we actually spoke about Deuteronomy, showing you that the Most High chose the people and He gave them laws and statutes and He laid a course, should in case they breach these laws and statutes. Okay, so in case they break the commandment. And this commandment was sealed by blood, man. Sorry. Quickly go back to um, Exodus 24 because we didn't get the full meat there. We had to uh, explain certain things. So you see this covenant, this contract was between the Most High Yahweh and the sons of Israel. And this thing was sealed with blood. Read. Exodus chapter 24 verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. He told you the book of the covenant is the laws and the statutes, the commandments that was given to the Israelites. Remember in um, Psalm 147, we told you, we read that the Most High has given these laws and statutes only to the sons of Israel. He has never done so with any other nation and will never do so until the kingdom come in which when we start teaching them these laws and statutes. Okay, read on. And they said, all oh, that the Lord has said, we we do. We we do. We will do. Yeah. We will we do. Okay, yeah. we will we do. Okay, we sorry. will do and be obedient. Okay. Now listen. Read on. Verse 8. And Moses So took... at the first, Moses read the laws unto them, just like when you want to sign a contract, yeah. you know, your, 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 your manager gives you the paper, your manager goes through the paper. He reads the contract, then if he sees something that is not okay with, he tells you, no, I'm not going to sign this contract. Then if you see everything that is okay, you say, okay, I'll sign it. The same thing happened to the sons of Israel. Moses read this contract unto them, and they said, yes, we accept it, and we'll be obedient unto this contract, man. Then they signed. And then they signed. Now let's check now, what the signature is. Yeah. Verse 8. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant. So you see, Moses took blood. He used blood to seal this, con this covenant, this contract, you know. He took the blood and he sprinkled it on the people. You know, this is the sealing. This is the signature, you know. Read. The, the covenant. He says who, the blood of the covenant. Yeah. The blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you, concerning all these walls. Verse 9. Then went up most... No, it's okay. It's okay. Let's go back. So you see, 
the, the contract was sealed with blood. Now let's go back to the to Ezekiel. Then what happened? It happened that the sons of Israel fell short of this contract. Then the causes of this contract started coming upon them. Now let me just give you a quick reminder that when we broke this contract, we had. Let me just give you a, a quick chronology of of how we were carried away captives, man. Remember, first. We went into captivity for 400 years, okay, in the hands of the Egyptians, okay? And all this, okay, all this happened due to our stubborn headedness, okay? After that, we went into, uh, into captivity under the Kushites of Mesopotamia, okay? You can get these precepts from the book of Judges, the third chapter from 3 to 10. We went 18 years under captivity in the hands of the Moabites. That's the book of Todd. Now, you know what? Let's get some precepts in this because it is important to let the people understand why we went into captivity. Quickly get the book of Judges chapter 3 verse 12. Okay? Because there is a reason why you have the book of Judges. You, there is a reason why you have all these books. It's telling you that, you know, we broke this covenant, we broke this covenant, then we went into captivity, we, started, we came back, the most I had mercy on us, we started following the ways of the of the Eden again. Then we went into captivity again. Yeah, Judges chapter 3. Read, verse 12. And this the is Judges chapter 3, verse 12. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. The children of evil, the children of Israel, didn't we read that they were stiff-necked people? They did evil again in the sight of the Most High Yahweh Bashemi Hashai by breaching the commandment that they signed with blood. And they said, Let the curses be on us, man. Read on. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened, and the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel. So you see, the children of Israel. They did evil in the sight of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, then the Most High strengthened their enemies, just like today. We are under the captivity of the so-called white man, okay? Whose biblical nationality is Esau Edom. This man now has power over the rest. He's the one that makes the law. He's the one that decides for the world. We are under the same captivity unto, to, unto this day. We are under his captivity, that's why we call ourselves different names. Nigerians, Congolese, um, Ghanaians, um, British, and all these things, you know? We are under his captivity. Read on. The king of Moab against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Most High, you know, is strengthening the hands of, the, of, the, of our enemies to take us into captivity. Now, this same pattern, that's why you have the book of Judges. It shows you how all these things have been going. We went 20 years into captivity under the hands of the Canaanites. You find that in the book of Judges, the fourth chapter, the second verse to the third verse. We went seven years under the hands of the Midianites. We went 18 years under the hands of the Ammonites. We went 40 years under the hands of the Philistines. Ciao. In which Ciao. The, the word Philistine today is known as Palestine. Esau has changed that name Philistine to Palestine. These were our neighbors and they've always had war with us from time to time. And you see, the Most High created a savior at that time whose name was Samson to redeem us from the hands of these people. You see, so you see, this thing is a chronology. That's why you really need to go read the book of Judges to understand. Anytime we breach the commandments, we go into... Now, just quickly get another quick precept regarding the Philistines. The book of Judges... The Read, 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 read. Verse 13. And he gathered unto him the children of... What are you reading? Judges 3, verse 13. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek, and went and smote Israel, and possessed the city of the city of palm trees. Okay, you see, so they come into our city, they possess our land, you know, they carry us away captivities. And those children that are carried away captivities, they get to these nations, they start following the ways of these nations. And they are always Israelites. Remember, they are always Israelites. But when they give, you know, the seed is the man. So the, with these men, if they meet with other nations, they give birth to children. The children are always Israelites, but they don't know they are Israelites. So this area, this, um, this, um, what's it? Um, 
What's the word I'm looking for? It starts with H. No. There's what I'm looking for. Well, anyway, so this thing. H. No, this thing of ours, which is. Um, damn, man. Use another word, man. Anyway, this thing, this part that the most I had with us. I'll take you back to your. H. Damn, man. I'm beginning to lose my brain anyway. So this part that the most high Yahweh Hashem Yahushai has had with us, the children that have been carried away captives, they don't know about these things. But remember, it's a promise that the most high has promised, man. You know, even unto our father Abraham, he said, thy seed, you know, out of thy loins shall come kings, man, that will rule upon the earth, man. You see? So is that all you have? Can. Now let's go to book of Judges, the 13th chapter. We just read from the top you know because that is why we always say study to show thyself approved you know so this these israelites that have been carried from different captivity to different captivities we just read sorry judges chapter 13 verse 1 and the children of israel did evil again in the sight of the lord so you see it we always tell you because <laughs> this is the stiff-necked people man you know they are quick to the bible tells you that the sons of israel are quick to do evil they are quick to do evil they, so they always do that just like we're doing today just like this, the people commenting you know writing all different kinds of madness on my comments you know telling me that uh, um the gms don't have the truth telling me that uh, um we are we are members of a cult in which i'm going to address all that in some other lessons you know saying things like oh uh, uh, like um, his name is not Yahweh Shai, his name is Jesus, you know. They, they, they believe everything except the, the truth, man. They believe everything except the truth. So we're always doing evil, denouncing this truth, you know. So we don't. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistine. Forty years. <laughs> yeah. So you see. This is, this is a continuous thing, but you know, the difference between this time is that we have a savior, and after we have been saved from this present captivity, we would not go into captivity again, because the second covenant is going to come up, which the laws are going to be written in our inward parts, and we would not be able to breach these commandments again. Now, after the, the, the Philistines, we went three years under the hands of the Assyrians, then quickly after the Assyrians came in the Babylonians, we went 70 good years under the hands of the, of, the, of the Babylonians. Now, people that you take into captivity for 70 years, they've had children, with, you know. How would their children know that, um, that they, they, they were Israelites? No, they wouldn't know. And remember, we were, we, went, we were under captivity of the Egyptians for 400 years, man. And, and when you go into captivity, you abide with, with the laws of can, the land. Can. No? Just like just like we find ourselves here in Italy, we can't we can't be putting the laws of Nigeria in place. No, we need to abide by the laws of the Italian uh, Italian powers, man. Yeah. You know, that that's what makes us uncircumcised. You know, when you hear uncircumcised in the scripture, you know. I'm now, from the sorry, have you finished? From the Babylonians, we went into captivity for two hundred and three years under the Medes and the Persians. For 203 years, my goodness. And you see, all these captivities were coming one after the other. One after the other. Because once the Most High saved us, we repented. But it just took a little. That's why you see, the scripture tells you, is it, um, it says in the book of Judges, it says, Jeshuron washed fat and kicked. Can you get that scripture real quick? Jeshuron. Just write J E. Um, it says, Jeshuron waxed fat and kicked, and he forgot about the commandment of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. No, just write Jeshuron. J E. Even in your Bible, S H. Even in your Bible, just write J, J E. S H. U R U N. This is Deuteronomy 32 verse 15. 
and Jeshurun is it's Israel, okay? The sons of this y y Yashar Allah, okay? Yeah, Deuteronomy 32, verse 15. But Jeshurun was fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook the Most High, which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. So you see, Israel, whenever we are being delivered, you know, we start getting the benefit of those blessings again. Because when we draw close to the Most High, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, we get the blessings that come with the, with the commandments. You know, that's why these so-called devils that are in power today, they do everything to keep you away from that laws and status, man. They do every damn thing. They spend a lot of money. They have budget after budget to make you become an alphabet, to make you become a so-called gay or whatever, you know. They do all these things to keep you away from the commandments. Because once we get into those commandments, the most will start having mercy on us. But once we most start having mercy on us, we start eating, we start having money, we start enjoying ourselves. What happens? We forget the laws again. Then we start doing evil that the rest of the nations are doing. Start watch. Do you remember that it didn't take how many days that Moses went up on the mountain of Sinai before he came down? The sons of Israel already built a calf. They were already worshiping a calf. Now that's speaking of the people that saw the great miracle the Most High did in, uh, in the Red Sea. Sea of reeds. No, these people actually saw the chariots. They saw chariots. They had chariots. They, they had manna falling from heaven. The Most High gave them quails. So this is just to tell you the, the nature of Israel. And this same nature of Israel, you can see them today on the comments boards. Coming against you. You know? Telling you, no, 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 no. They accept every damn thing except the truth. You tell them you are the sons of Israel. You need to come back to your district. They say, no. What about other nations? They care so much about other nations because they love the ways of the other nations. It has always been. And it is never going to change until Yahweh Shai comes back. You know, after that, we went 200 years in captivity under the hands of the Persians. Then we went for 267 years under the hands of the Greeks. Okay, now you can read of this in the book of, um, of um, please, let's get the book of Maccabees, the first chapter. You know, let's go straight to the point. And because this, this captivity is very, very important, and this captivity is where you have the Israelites that have been called Greeks, okay? Yep. Now, Please. go to the point. This is First Maccabee, chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his, to, to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Now, this King Antiochus, okay, he came from the lineage, he came from the lineage of Esau, Edom. He was an Edomite. He was one of the generals of Alexander. And this is when Edom actually got into power again, you know? So he came to Jerusalem, he, he took over Jerusalem, man. You know, he stopped them from following their laws, he stopped them from doing, um, from rendering the sacrifices. What he did actually was, he, he turned us to strangers in our land because he was bringing different strange doctrines that we were not used to. We don't. 42. Okay, let me read it. Let me read it again. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and okay. everyone. He wanted all to become one people just like today. You know? United they say, Nations. United Nations. United we stand. United this one. Other BS, man. But what did the Most High say? We did are he, separate. We are separate, man. We are not supposed to be in the so-called United Nations. Okay? <laughs> yeah. We are separate. Israel, the true Israelite are supposed to be the ruler. We are not supposed to be in the any time United Nation because that United Nation is wickedness against the Most High. That is where you see them passing laws like man, you can lay with your fellow man, women can lay with your fellow woman, you can be whatever you want to be. No, that is wickedness. That is what you get in the United Nation. You see, Most High separated us away from these people and give us laws, statutes, commandments, the ways we should live. This is what the Bible is talking about. And you see, the, the, the thing that these Christians don't understand, Christians are really bogged down because they think the commandments, they don't even know what the commandments are. 
we have their three commandments we add commandments that teaches you how to 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 live with the rest of your of your neighbors it tells you how to comport with your servant it tells you how to till the ground it tells you how to treat the animals it tells you how it is tells this, you how to do business this is these are oh i don't really have the words man these are laws just how like to this live. Land, just like this land now they have their own wicked alienated laws yep. the laws of the bible are, is a way of life way of life law it's a of way life. of life it's a law of life yep. you know it's not just hey don't do this don't do that no it's a way of life it's, it's a, a way it's a way you should conduct yourself yep. so we left those ways of life and we started following the, the the ways of life of the other people now look at where we find ourselves our brothers are chopping off their rods they want to become women our sisters are taking off their titties and trying to become men this is the laws of this land this is where it took us right now you see so when you hear gentiles that will be grafted in he's talking about the israelites who fell from their ways you know this is why we became gentiles this is why we're going, to, camp. we're going to get to that point we're yeah. going to get to that point of these gentiles that they speak of okay so yeah. we're just giving you an insight of the history of what made us become gentiles man yeah. because people don't understand the meaning of gentiles we don't 42 and everyone should leave his laws so all the hearing agree according to the commandment of the king so all the Edens agreed because they had no problem with that yep. because they, 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 they actually created without the most I didn't give them laws and all that thing yep. so it was good for them they had it, it was good for them but for us it wasn't good because there are punishments that come with this yep. we don't 43 yeah many also of the Israelites consented to his religion so you see many of our brothers the Israelites they consented unto the Israelites yep. okay they and consented to the religion Buongiorno. so this this thing now they consent they consented to this way of life which made them alienated from the promises and the commandments of the most high which made them become strangers gentiles that is where you have the word gentiles from read on and sacrifice unto idols and profane the sabbath you see this today now people don't know what 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 sabbath is you know how to keep sabbath they call it, uh, some people, today what we have today now is Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. Saturday is not Sabbath. Sunday is not Sabbath. Sabbath is according to the moon. That is how we keep it. This is how our ancestors keep Sabbath. The fourth day of the moon, you know, is the day of Sabbath. The new moon. The new moon. That is Sabbath, not Sunday, not Saturday. You can't go into the scripture and say Saturday or Sunday, no. That is the way, that is the change. You see? So this is how we lost everything, our heritage, our ways. Now what we know is Saturday and Sunday. You see? And that's, that's the fulfillment of the book of um, Daniel, Daniel. 7.25. Yeah. Okay? It says it was going to change the laws and the times. Yeah. Okay? You know, everything is written in the script. This is what the scripture is all about. The, 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 you, you must get the narrative. If you don't have the narrative, you can't understand what the scripture is saying. Today they took our book, they changed everything, they, they, they create a religion with it. Now everybody can be, you know, just like... Ah, sorry. Um, let's get the book of First Esdras. Because this thing that you said now is powerful. Because it's the same thing that they did in the past time. They tried to build the temple with us. Yeah. It's in the book of First yeah, Esdras. Yeah, yeah. It's in the yeah, third yeah, chapter yeah. or so. Yeah. You know, because these devils... They want to build with us they want to they want to graft themselves in into our promise by force you know <laughs> this is something they've always been doing now the word gentile in which we have natural gentiles that are uh, that are other nations that are not following the ways of the most high they are other nations then our people became those gentiles why did they become those gentiles by following the ways of other nations by embracing their rules and regulations Okay. Yep. The most uh, it's written that two cannot work if they, they, they be not in agreement. Okay. Yep. Now they've chosen to follow the ways of those other, just like brother read in the book of First Maccabees. Some Jews who are, you know, speaking of those in the in the in the southern kingdom, you know, some Jews they accepted to these laws to follow the ways of these Greeks. Yeah. Now following the Greeks, they start cutting off their beards. They started, they started drawing tattoos on their body. They started having homosexual intercourses. 
they started doing all different kinds of abominations and this made them gentiles it made them gentiles just like this, this the same people okay but if you don't get the full understanding of these scriptures you just build a whole castle on top of um on top of um, um um salvation for greeks and jews now that scripture that speaks of salvation is for uh, speaking of jews and greeks what about the rest of the nations mm. why is he speaking of, of greeks there okay yeah. Uh, do you mean to tell me that salvation is only for the Jews and the Greeks? Yeah. What about the Moabites? Uh, what about the Ammonites? What about the Persians? <laughs> <laughs> so you see these people are really crazy. Now yeah. that Greek, they turn it to the rest of the world. Yeah. And now we're going to look. This is, this is, this is, this is the Zondervan Bible contact, um, this is the Zondervan contact Bible dictionary. There is a word known as, as Ellen. Where is it? Hellenist, okay? This is the word known as Hellenist because what Antiochus did was he made our people became, become Hellenist, okay? He colonized, he colonized our, people. our people and he turned them to his own people. Yep. Now, this is, this is the Bible dictionary, okay? This is, the, this is the definition of Hellenist. It says, Jews who made Greek their tongue and with it often adopted Greek ideas and practices. And you can find this 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 um this in the book of Acts the sixth chapter and Acts the ninth chapter of 29th verse. Those are the people that the um, apostle Paul went to preach to. These are the so-called people that are saying salvation for the Jews and the Greeks because the the Israelites, just like I told you, went to captivity under the hands of the Greeks. Okay, and they, they turned us to they literally turned us to Greeks. Because if you if you kept our if you kept our laws, they were going to kill you. We're going to read that. Sorry, you want to add something? Yeah, like what the brother is saying. You know, this is this is this is big. You know, it's very powerful. Now, where we came from, you know, we, we call ourselves so-called Nigeria. Nigeria today, if you do your research, you find out that Nigeria was Hellenized, or in, in today's time we use colonized by Britain. You know, that is, they changed the word to colonize. Yeah, today now they have changed the word to colonize. This is why we speak English today. If you go to Nigeria, uh, there are ways of government. They have Senate, they have a house, they just have all like this. the Greeks. Just like the Britain. The way they do it in Britain, that is the way they do it in, in Nigeria. That is what it means. Now we have become Nigerian. Instead of being an Israel, we are, be, we are under, under the, the colonization of Britain. And we are, we, are going to get, we are going to get to the point of it's this. It's simple. We're going, simple. To get, we're going to get to the point of this last um, siege of how all this Nigeria thing, Ghana thing, and all this madness yeah. came to pass. This is... We're going to get there. It's just a step at a time, you know? So don't bug out real quick. Just still chill. We're bringing out the precepts. Yeah. Read. Where uh, Ezra? Ezra can. Okay. So the brother mentioned of something really important. He said they want to always partake of our promise, you know? Yeah. And this has always been. Even back in the time when we had um, the permit from the... From, from I think King Darius or Cyrus, okay, of the Persian to go restructure our temple back. And we know spiritually our temple is our body today, yeah. you know. That's why they, they, they're trying to force themselves and say salvation is for everybody, salvation yeah. is this, salvation is that. They no longer use John 3 16 because we've debunked that. Yeah. They no longer use it. Now they're using Greeks and Jews, okay. Read. This is Ezra chapter 4, start from 1. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity, Judah, now, who are the adversaries of, of Israel, the other you can, nation, you can go read that from the book of um of of real get it real quick. Sorry, um, Psalm eighty three. Just go to the point where it makes mention of their names. You know, these are the adversaries of Israel. You know, first of all. Esau Edom, the so-called white man, okay? Uh, this is Psalm 83, I'll start from 5. He said, For they have consulted, consulted together with one consent. They are confed confederates. They are confederates against thee, the tabernacle of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Now, if you read earlier, it says, that read verse 4 verse 4 it says 
They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Now that's what they're doing. They want to introduce all nations into our promises, you know, making us forget who we really are. The Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and the Latinos for the major part. But we have Israelites spread in all parts of the world due yeah. to captivity and all this. Yeah. Due to escape um, from, from wars and fugitive and all these things. We are yeah. actually in all parts of the world. You know, and this is, this is determined through the spirit, man. If this truth that we teach you, if you receive it, then there is a huge probability that you are Israelite. Because this truth, if you're not Israelite, you wouldn't receive it, man. Yeah, so you see, they try to erase that name by telling you that the door of salvation is open to all people. Now they, they call themselves the Israelites, they are the, people, the people in Israel, they call themselves Israelites, but we know that they are not Israelites, but they are of the synagogue of Satan. Really get that, real, that, quick, that scripture real quick, sorry. Synagogue of Satan, that um, um, Revelation 2. Revelation 2 9. I know thy works at tribulation and poverty. So, this is actually speaking to, to the Israelites, but this scripture is also used for the lineage of the wicked. Okay, now read. But thou art rich. So, the Most High Yahweh Shemi Shai knows our, our, our tribulation, how we're suffering, how we're catching hell in this place, how we are, we are under captivity. But guess what? We are rich because the promise is ours, man. And I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Jews and are not, so but you see, are the synagogue of Satan. So what did he say? He says they are the synagogue of Satan. Those who say that they are Jews, but they are not, but they are of the synagogue of Satan. Ash. Let me get you on that scripture real quick. Let me get another scripture to back this up because people might say that's why I have another scripture to go go to back it up. This is Yahusha himself speaking. I think uh, Luke 20, 21, 24. Yeah, this is chap this is uh, Luke 21 verse 24. This is Yahusha speaking. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led. No, we're speaking of um, the people, Can. This is the scripture I'm looking yeah, yeah, for. Yeah. People that are actually occupying Israel today, they are not the real Israelites, they are impostors, they are of the root of Amalek, and they are known as the synagogue of Satan. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 6. It says, And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Okay, Ashdod, you see, Ashdod is a city in Israel. Okay, now this is a code word to tell you that bastards, what's the meaning of a bastard? A fatherless child, you know? Bastards are the ones occupying our land today. It says, bastards shall dwell in Ashdod. And that Ashdod represents Israel. Yeah, let's continue. Yeah, yeah, continue. Now, uh, Luke 21, 24, says, and the and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and jerusalem shall be trodden down of the gentiles until Ooh. the time of the gentiles be fulfilled so you see read that scripture again sorry and they shall fall by the edge of the sword meaning the israelites so the israelites will be falling by the edge of the sword now speaking of you know now we're speaking of the of the greeks how they came to, to to overcome our land and take us cap captives okay from the Greeks we were passed to the hands of the Romans how did the Romans get it 70 AD okay that 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 that's that, that the mission that was led by Titus okay the son of Vespasian one of the sons of Vespasian actually the, the siege started with his first other son who is um, Domitian okay then Titus was the one that ended this yeah, this this siege in which the commander there the commander that actually led this siege on Israel his name was Alexander Tiberius and guess what he was a Hebrew Israelite and this is just secular history you can go look it up so this tells you that that um, Roman soldier that's been spoken of Cornelius he was an Israelite 
because we had Israelites that were part of these Roman armies. This is where these Christians don't understand. They don't get what, what the thing is. So you see, 70 AD, they came down to our home. They besieged us. They caused a big hunger. People were dying, starving to death, in which, according to the Spirit, that's exactly what they're about to do today again. You know, they're besieging your economy right now. They're besieging your food supply, you know, so that you're going to give up and concede and take the MOTB. You understand? You take the MOTB, which is that thing that's going to be inserted in your right hand or in your forehead. It's a microchip, man, you know? And whosoever is not teaching you this is a, is a false prophet, as we said, as we say, you know? So going back to the, to the topic, they besieged our land. They killed many of us, you know? And what happened? This caused the dispersion of, 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 of Israel. Diaspora. This is the diaspora that has been spoken of because Israelites fled to all parts of the world for safety. That is how we came into the land of so-called Africa. You know? That is why you have Nigeria, a country. Have you ever seen any country that is 60 years old? <laughs> My yeah. father is older than the country. Just yeah. imagine. That's because these are new countries that are created by the so-called devils, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Yeah. You know, that's why we read to you that it was a cause to change the landmarks, to cut the uh, boundaries and landmarks that were kept by our fathers. You know, because the Most High created all these nations perfectly already. Now this man came to cause all this confusion. This is what the Christians don't understand. There is a story behind all this. There is you know? a narrative. There is a narrative behind all this. That is why Apostle Paul was chosen to go preach now to these Israelites that were spread into all these parts of the nations, yep. uh, Ephesus, in which you see all those areas, when you speak of all those Ephesus, we were speaking of the area of Turkey, today, modern day Turkey, you know? I, I go. This is James, chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> I thought you were going to pick that up. <laughs> James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Oh, sorry, Britain. sorry, sorry, sorry. You didn't say it right. I thought I heard to the world, to the Israelites, no. to all the world. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. But excuse me, why is James being a racist? Why is he not including the rest of, of, of the nations? Why is he not including the Moabites? What did the Moabites do? What did the Ammonites do? What about Edom? What about Philistine? Why is he not including all these people? Why? Because the promises is not for them. This is our story. This is our story, man. You know, and this is New Testament. But look, the Christ, these so-called Christians, they will skip this verse and they will go to the to the Jews and the Greeks alone. But excuse me, what about other nations? If salvation is only for the Jews and the Greeks alone? What about other nations? Now that Greek is what I told you. They're called Hellenists. These are the sons of Israel who, who speak the language of the Jews, who were carried away captives and follow the ways of the Jews. They call themselves Greeks. And all this happened during the time of the Maccabees, you know. Sorry, I wanted to say something. Anyway, before you get there, before you get there, before you get there, let's go complete what we were reading of um, the... Can, can. This is Hosea 8 verse 8. He said, Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. Excuse me. It says, Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles. We were carried away slaves. This, is, this has caused the scattering. You know, we were reading to you about how we went under the captivity of the Jews, um, or of the Greeks, in which the narrative is written in the book of um, First Maccabees. You can go read it by yourself. Now, these Christians, we say First Maccabees is an apocrypha and it's not... It's not, it's, not, it's not known or whatever. But this is a Bible, the 1611 edition of the King James Bible. This is, this is the oldest edition of the King James Bible. Guess what? It has the book of Maccabees. It has all these things. Guess what? In the, in the, I think in the, in the 1980s or in the 1800s, yeah, there, there was a group of Bible destroyers, the Masoretes or whatever you call them. They removed this book from the Bible. Why? Because this Bible goes deep into, these scriptures goes deep into how our people became Hellenized. How our people became known as Greeks, Israelites that, uh, that embraced the Greek, um, the Greek, um, the Greek um, way of life. 
you know so they took all these things out and also to hide their identity as as the devils of the uh, the bible speak of you know addition to es uh, addition to esther it tells you how um haman was a macedonian you know and it tells you how the, the seed of Ag uh, agag of, e of edom is still right here amongst us today the amalekites yep. wow. so you see these people don't make all these researches and they bug out they choke on just simple milk man if you if you choke on milk how can you receive meat <laughs> eh? so to all those all you coming on my page you know commenting stupid bugged out comments that this that 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 if you don't make all these researches and find all these things out for yourself it means the most high has decided to blind you as the book of um, isaiah the 29th chapter tells you you know he has kept a spirit of sleepiness on you so you would not wake up and understand this truth you get now speaking on the scattering let's get some more scriptures on the scattering of israel in which let's get the book of um isaiah 11 12. Starting like, starting like yeah you can start 11 11 you know the point is at 12. Yeah. this is isaiah 11 11 and it shall come to pass sorry you, read the game called the noise and Isaiah 11, 11, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Excuse me, did he say he was going to re recover the world? He said he was going to recover the remnant of his people. Who is the most highest people? You get that from the book of Psalm 50. The, 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 the saints of the most high are the Israelites, man. Stop playing games, man. Stop playing, man. The second time. Do you hear that? It he says said the, the second, second time. time. What was the first time? In Egypt. And this prophecy has never still... come to pass. <laughs> this is what Yahashua is coming to do. You know? So let me read it again. Isaiah 11, 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Isaiah and from Egypt and from Petrus, and from Kush, and from Elam. Okay, hold on. Remnant of his people that are scattered in this part of the world. Yep. In Africa, in India, Elam is India, in Patros, Greece, you know, telling you all these places where we'll be scattered, man. Stop playing games. His people, he didn't say the world. Come Stop on, man. playing games, man. <laughs> man. From Patros, and from Kush and from Elam. Excuse me, and we have a precept also in the book of Acts, you know, in which I'm going to find that precept in the book of Acts, which, you know, when that is when they start speaking in tongues, you know. Yeah, Acts 2, we get to get that too. Read, just speak, read this. And from Elam, and from Sina, and from, from Hamat, Sina. Yeah. and from Hamat, and from the island of the sea. The islands of the seas. That's telling you that Israel will be gathered in all these places. Yep. But what, what would the Most High do? The Most High will recover them back. Yep. Okay? And the recovery now has started. The recovery has started through these words, man. This is why we are, we are on the street teaching. This is where our apostles, elders, and elders before them have been preaching this word for more than 50 years. You know? Even way before we were born. You know? So this is the recovery. The Mosai have started gathering his people through the world. Now listen, this is the book of Acts, the second chapter. I'm going to read from verse 4. It says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, these bogged out Christians, we tell you that speaking in tongues is <laughs> that's madness man <laughs> speaking in other tongues means speaking in different languages yeah. speaking other languages you know this is the madness of these people you know these are the people that want to come and sit and bring scriptures to, yeah. to contend with you they don't even understand anything they don't understand any word they don't understand anything man yeah. they have no understanding because the most high has purposely blind their eyes now it says and they, in verse 5 it says and they were dwelling at jerusalem jews devout men out of 
every nation under heaven. It's simple, man. He didn't say everybody come. He it's said Jews, simple. Jews, Jews, the Israelites. Because we have a law. There's, there's uh, 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 ordinances that we kept three times in a year. You know? So after we are being scattered, everywhere you are, you, you come back. The Jew, the one, the devoted ones, now we come back three times in a year in Jerusalem. And check this out. In verse 9, it says, no, let me start from verse 8. It says, and out here we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. They were born in these countries. And it will tell you the country. It says, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus and in Asia and in Phrygia and in Pamphylia and in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful work of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Okay? Yeah. So let me let me just give one example. Here in Italy, this brother can speak Italy very well. Me, I can. He can speak Italy very well. There's another brother. This is what it means. You know? Then they cannot speak Italian in different languages. Speaking in tongues. <laughs> As we are doing camps in Italian language, if you watch our lessons, because we go out lately, we've been going out twice a week, you know. In the middle of the week, we go and teach in Italian language with the brother Kalam. You know, we do our teachings in, in Italian, and this is the truth the Most High has given us. We are speaking, he has opened our mouth to teach this truth in Italian language, just like we have brothers in Peru, we have brothers in Mexico, we have brothers in Santa Domingo, we have brothers in Tanzania, we have brothers in Niger. Hey, listen to me, man. And they're speaking various language where they are. Stop playing games, man. Stop playing games. This is because, what the Bible is saying. See, your, your stupid <laughs> words that you say, your comments that you make in these videos, and you try to bring our spirit down, you're only hurting yourself, man. Stop playing games. Brothers are in Germany. Brothers are in Holland. Brothers are in Australia. Brothers are in Finland. Hey, stop playing games, man. Jews devoted, man. Spread under every nation, under heaven, man. Yeah. It didn't stop say the whole games, world. Man. It didn't say everybody, the whole world. No, it told you Jews devoted, man. That's so you what see, these Israelites, about. these sons of Israel, many of them have lost their identity. Okay, they've lost their, this is the word I was looking for. The word I was looking for was heritage. Okay, heritage. They've lost their heritage of yeah. them being sons of Israel. What's that heritage? The laws and the statues. Yeah, let they've me, let forgot. Me it. I think uh, can. most of told Jeremiah. He said he will bring you back to your heritage, man. Yeah. Just write heritage, you know. So we've lost that heritage. These are the people that the Apostle Paul went to preach to, yeah. you know. Yeah. This is Jeremiah 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land whose thou knoweth not. For you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Have you seen that forever means for a long period long of time? time. Yep. Even the Apostle Paul tells you, as the most I abandon these people, God forbid. You know? Yep. <laughs> So what, what, what's, what's these people talking about, man? What are you talking about? You can't come walk to us and try to tell us things that you don't even know, man. You know? Great Millstone, GMS don't play, man. Call Allah, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. But it's truth, man. Yep. We are unshaking, man. All those nonsense that you post, all those nonsense that you say, you know, these things cannot shake us, man. Because the Most High has revealed the truth unto us. You can't receive this truth because it has not been given unto you. And guess what? Just wait. A personalized missile is coming for you, man. You know? Go, go. If you have pressure, bro. Yeah, this is Daniel chapter 9. Verse, let me start from 11. It said, Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Messiah, because we have sinned against him. Twelve. And, and excuse me, what is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law as the book of uh, 1 John, is it 3, 4 tells yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you know? It is the transgression of the law. The yeah. law was given to only Israelites. Yeah. So guess what? Only Israelites can sin yeah. because where there is no law, there is no sin, yeah. okay? So we were the only people that were given these laws and commandments 
the other nations, they are good to go worshipping their idols and all that thing. The most I actually created them to do so. You know, we don't. Verse 12. And he has confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges. Our judges that judge us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. So what is that great evil? That great evil is making us becoming mad, aliens unto our heritage, man. That's why you see, as I was saying, the so-called Hebrew Israelites, you tell him that he's a Hebrew Israelite, he's mad, man. He'll tell you no. First thing he will ask you, what about other nations? No, he's, he cares about other nations just before his own salvation, you know? This is, this is the madness. The Most High has done a great thing, you know, we've been carried away into all different kinds of the world we that we are meant to be the the administrators of this kingdom now we are the servants of of, of this kingdom we have become servants unto our enemies you know yeah, yeah. even king solomon said that i have seen a servant on horses and and the princess walking the prince is walking uh can you know can that scripture let's bring it up man i've seen servants i've seen i've seen uh, i've seen um i've seen servants on horses and that's that's the perfect image of the roosevelt um what do you call it the statue that was brought down you know that's that scripture right there i think ecclesiastical 38 if i'm not mistaken or seven seven if i don't know the you know just write servants on horses you know they did a debut a statue I, i'm not sure where in the united states where you had one of the presidents you know riding on a horse then he had two young kids standing right beside him uh, two men standing right beside him one was negro and the other was um the native indians representing the southern and the northern tribes these people they know the truth you know they know the truth but you know the israelites talk of Israelites, the native americans and the latinos oh, thanks, these are the people who don't know what's going on man they are the people who don't know the truth but the rest even the people that's that are you know the people that are oppressing us they know the truth and in order for you to tell a lie you definitely must know the truth exactly. you're the last person who doesn't know yeah. no read on ecclesiastic 10 verse 7 yes. ecclesiasticus oh. ecclesiastes okay i have seen servants upon horses and princess walking as servant upon the earth i have seen servants upon horses who are the servants esau edom these are meant to be the servants, man. These are meant to be the servants. Okay? Yeah. He has seen them upon horses. He has seen them upon horses. Then he has seen princes walking as servants upon the earth. You know? Now let's get another scripture on, on the schedule. Let's go to the book of Joel, the first chapter. Let's just read down. Because Joel is speaking of how the most I scatter the sons of Israel. You know? Yeah, this is the book of Joel, chapter 1. Yes, sir. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Petro. I think I got this word right. The son of Petro. Petro. Yeah. Verse 2. Hear this, hear this, you old men, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell you your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. So why is he telling you to tell your children of this, and your children tell their children? And all, we, 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 we refuse to do that. That's why we, we're calling ourselves different names. You know, that's why we're calling ourselves black. That's why we're calling ourselves um, African-Americans, Africans, you know? Because this thing has not been passed from generation to generation. You know, read on. That which the palmer room, the palmer worm, the palmer worm, that which the palmer worm has left, has oh. the locust had, has left the has had left the lo had the locust eaten, had the locust eaten, and that which the locust has left has the canker worm, worm eaten. So you see, this is this is really powerful, man. He's speaking that he's saying that the canker worm and the locust, what the locust has left, the canker worm has, has eaten. That is speaking of how we were going from 
from, from, places. from place to places, you know. The Greeks, they come, they carry us, bam. The ones that remain, Romans will come and take them. The ones that remain, the Americans will come and take them. <laughs> Read on. <laughs> <laughs> and that put the canker worm has left the caterpillars before as a caterpillar eating <laughs> oh man so that is telling you how we went we went under the philistines under the moabites the ammonites the the assyrians the babylonians the greeks the romans no these are the sons of israel okay Go, go. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 14. Is Israel a servant or a born Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? That is, is what Joel is saying. That's what Joel is saying. Yeah. Is Israel a servant or is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Now, the word spoiled is to rob, you know? Why is Israel robbed? Why are we the least in all places that we find ourselves? But you see, you simple-minded Negroes in these churches, you know, you don't understand anything, you yep. know. And now, I'm beginning, I'm beginning to have that feeling that Esau is planting, you know, many of his agents to confuse people in these last days. They'll come under your comments, they'll drop some comments so as to, to scare away the rest of the people watching your videos, you know. Yep. Read on. Verse 5, Joel 1, 5. Awake, you drunkards, and weep. And how are you drunkards of wine? Can that drunkenness of wine has to do with philosophies of these different nations, man? Yep. You have to awake now, you fucking drunkards, man, because you're drunk with all these philosophies of this so-called white man. You're drunk when he tells you that salvation is open for everybody. You know, we we also brought out the, the scripture in the book of um, First Ezra to tell you how that word I but we didn't go into it anymore. You know to tell you how they, they always want to partake of our glory, man. Whenever they see us building again, they always want to partake of our glory. Read on. Awake you drunkards and weep and how are you drunkards of wine? Because of the new wine, for it is out of from your mouth. Verse 6. For a nation is come upon my people, my land. Yeah. For, for a, a nation, nation is, come upon, is come upon my land. Strong and without number. Who teach? Sorry. So he says, a nation is come upon the sons of Israel. Yeah. You know, just like now, this we are under. We are, we are under this. This nation that is talking of is talking of the Romans, man. In which this this kingdom right here is a continuation of the Romans. Talking of America, is talking of also when America went down to 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 Africa. Yep. so-called Africa to take the rest of our brothers that were there Britain all of you them. know the Britain the Portuguese you know all these Edomite nations you know this is speaking of how they came to pick all of us man the Belgians and all that thing we don't yep. for a nation is come upon my land strong and without number whose teeth are the teeth of a lion so when he talks about teeth, he's talking about their weapons, man. Their weaponry, man. Their power. Their power, man. Their might. Read yeah. on. And he has the check teeth of a great lion. Verse 7. He has led my wine, my vine west. I'm sorry. Is that not the vine? What's the vine of the most high Yahweh Shemi Israel. Israel. He says he has laid my vine west. Read yeah. on. He has led my vine west and back my fig tree. He has made it clean bare and cast it away. Can't, because today now, the people that are occupying Israel, just like we told you, these are the sons of Amalek, man, the Edomites. Though we have a, a, a small number of Israelites that are there, but those Israelites are not recognized, man. They are actually at the bottom, at the scrap. They are the ones that are doing the cleaning jobs for these Amalekites, you know? They have laid us bare. Now we're calling ourselves Africans, we're calling ourselves Romans, we're calling ourselves um, Greeks, we're Balias. calling ourselves Ephesians, we're calling ourselves different names, man. Elamites, you know? So these are the people in which the, 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 the promise pertains to, 
and these are the people that the apostle Paul came to to, to take, bring back to the promise. He told you in the book of Romans 9, my king's men, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, men. Yep. James' letter wasn't revolted to the world. It was revolted to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad, men. Because of the curses, remember, we broke the curses. Then after we broke the curses, we, the curses come upon us. We scattered all over the earth, you know? It's very simple, man. It's very, very simple. Truth. Truth is not complicated. It's like one plus one is two. That's it. This no, is what the Bible... Esau, Esau wants you to get one plus one is eleven. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not possible, you know. See, anyway, I'm going to address those comments, you know. I'm just doing this on a broader view. So I address a few things and tell you to come watch this lesson, okay? Because yeah. we took the time to, do, to just teach this to teach on this topic because you know we have more time to spend outside teaching on the streets okay so i'm going to address few topics on the comments that i get and you should come check out this video you know read on because this video we're doing everything you know we're going a little deep into it read on yeah verse seven again he has led my vine west and back my fig tree he had made it clean bare and cast it away the branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin, gathered with sackcloth, for the husband of her youth. Verse 9. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. Didn't, didn't Antiochus come into our land and tell us not to offer any more sacrifices? Rather, Antiochus placed, if anyone circumcised the child, that person was going to be killed. Yeah. The mother would be killed and the child would be killed, you yeah. know? Putting yeah. all kinds of wicked laws. And what did these laws make us become? It made us become like them, a wild vine. Really yeah. speak. Example. Example of what the father just said now. You know, like today, in our custom, when a child, when a male child is born, you know, in the eight days, right? In the eighth day. In the eighth day, they're it's supposed to circumcise him. circumcise him, you know? But today, when, when, you know, everywhere we find ourselves today, when we are giving birth, you know, it's, it's not done. You know, until maybe when the child is grown up, you know. And they recognize, it's not done, man. So that is, that is one of the laws that we, 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 we stop, you know. This is how we, we become a Gentile. We become just, like a, a, other people. Just to tell you, the brother Kalam. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Adio. <laughs> the brother Kalam. The brother Kalam, which is the, 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 the so-called white-looking brother, who is a full Italian breed, but of the tribe, probably of Asha of Judah or Judah, you know. The brother, when he came into this troop, that's when he got circumcised, man. Exactly. Yeah. At the age of, I think, 27 or 28. I you imagine. Know? That's when he got circumcised. You see? And he, he wasn't pushed to do it, but reading the, the words, understanding the scriptures, he went by himself. I wouldn't even have the, the courage to tell him, hey, go do this thing. But I told him that this is by faith, man. Yeah. If you feel like doing it, this is, this is the right thing to do. Because it's a commandment that was given from generation to generation. The spirit fell on the brother and he went and he got circumcised. And this is what, this is what um, Apostle Paul came to do for our brothers who were born under the Greek law, under the Roman law, who thought they were Romans, who were just doing, having long hair and all that thing. You know, he came to tell those people to come back to their heritage, man. Yeah. It's not hard to, it's not too hard to understand. We don't. And the truth has, you know. Even, the, even, even, even the, uh, after this we get to the book of Romans 11. Okay. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the last ministers, mourn. Now our priests are rappers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Our priests are rappers, man. They are gangsters. <laughs> they are gangsters. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Verse 10. The field is wasted. The land mourned. The land mourned. For the corn is wasted. The new one is dried up. The oil languishes. So you see, all these things, there were ordinances. Now let's get the book of Hosea. The one you've always wanted to bring out. You know? All these things, all these things, there were the ordinances that we had to do. Everything was cut off. 
do to these devils when they came to our land, took us captives, stopped us from doing all that thing, you know? And you know what they were doing in the time of Yahushai? You know, the priests, the Romans, made them rich, man. They made them have beautiful villas, you know? So they were doing the bidding of the Romans, not the bidding of the Jews, you know? They were sold out, just like we see them today. Yeah, our celebrities like, being sold out. Yeah, just like today in America. Yes. You see, our, our people have become uh, basketball players, big time movie you know, actors. They, they make them rich. So by doing this, they are forgotten who they are. You know, coming now, the truth have Heavenly Father has shown us uh, the truth, the light again. Now we are telling our people, look, come back, this is who you are. No, they don't give a fuck. They don't yeah? give a fuck, man. Because they are living well. They don't want to be who they're supposed to be. Now they want to be the Gentiles. This is what this is the truth of the Bible. This is our history. This is the reality. You know? So we're just going to go through the book of um of now we didn't even touch on, on the New Testament to, to show you, but it's good that we, we go through all this history before now with all this history that we've given you. It's <laughs> you just you should just know when he speaks about salvation coming to the Gentiles, it means the Israelites that became Gentiles. Okay? It's just simple, you know. There is nothing, there is no big deal about it, you know. But now we're going to during the week, we're going to we might do a lesson, we might do a lesson during the week, you know, to to face some some few verses in the in the New Testament, yeah, like yeah. Uh, the book of Acts, you know, all those you know, Greeks, Greeks and, and Jews, Jews and all that, you know, we'll just bring those out. But now to complete this this, let's go to the book of um Hosea's the brother has. Hosea one, start from ten, right? No, uh, okay. let's start from one when it okay. says, you know. Okay. Hosea 1 and 1. The word of the Lord that came unto, Hos unto Hosea, Hosea, the son of Barry, in the days of Uzziah, Uzziah, Jotan, Jotan Ahaz, and Hez Hezekiah, king of. king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of jo Joash. King of Israel. Verse 2. <laughs> Verse 2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of Hordom and children of Hordom. So you see, so you see, the most I told the prophet Hosea to go take a, a prostitute, a literal prostitute, okay? And Hosea had this prostitute he had children with this prostitute now go to where he had the children and all that you know and this is just to let you know a similitude of what was going on in israel is it not written that we've gone a warring amongst other nations let me give you a quick precept about a warring Just write the word a warring. Hmm? A warring. Battle. Yeah. A warring. A W H O R. Mm-hmm. Word on a warring. I had that scripture, but I can't remember. Like Israel becoming a war, KJV. Oh, okay. That is the book of Judges. Can. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 3. This is the point I want to have. So I have Jeremiah 3 on lock. Let's go back to read the Hosea. Okay? okay. <clears throat> Jeremiah. Uh, Hosea. 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 Okay. You know, because 
People need to understand this thing that had to happen with Osea. The most I told Osea to go take a wife of, of all these prostitutes, okay? And Osea actually literally got a wife. He had children with these prostitutes. We don't. Let's get the, the meat in the bone. No, let's read from where she conceived from the... As a matter of fact, just go. Just read from three. Read from three. Okay, yeah. Hosea went three. So he went and took Gomer. Because the, the, book, the book of Hosea was written for a reason. Okay? It was written for a reason. And it's very, very instrumental and important in understanding the term Gentile. Yeah, okay? it's going to be a symbolic. It's symbolic. Of what Israel is going to become in the future. You know? So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblem, which conceived and bare him a son. Verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and we cast to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. So you see, um, um, the prophet Jehu was a, was a righteous prophet that was, that was murdered, okay? And that was symbolic that the Most High we seize from being said, and we caused to seize the kingdom. The Most High was going to seize the house of Israel from flourishing. It was going to seize the house of Israel, meaning we were going to go into captivity. Okay, read on. Verse 5 And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel, and she conceived again. And bear a daughter. And the Mosai said unto him, Call her name Luruhama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. So you see, he had a second child, and he said he should call her name Luruhama, which means the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai would have no mercy again on Israel. Yeah. You know, the time of that mercy was finished, and we're still suffering until that time until a savior was going to come to bring us back to that mercy. And that savior is his son, Yahweh Shai. Okay, read on. But I will utterly take them away. The most I will take us away, how? They will put us into the hands of our enemies. They will carry us away captives. Yep. Read on. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and we serve them by the Lord, their power, and we not serve them by bow. So you see, the most I said it was going to save the house of Judah. Yeah. Now, this awakening of this troop came first by the house of Judah, then onto the rest of, of, of the of the Israelites. You know, remember the blessing uh, in uh, the book of Genesis, it says, the scepter shall not pass away from Judah. You know, this was a promise that this troop came back again through Judah, which is Yahweh Shai, the edge, the edge of our tribe, Judah. You know, that mercy came through him. You know, then that mercy now is open to the to the northern tribes, the Asher, Naphtali, the rest of the tribes of Israel. Okay, read on. And and we not save them by bow, nor by sword. The Most High will not save us by bow, nor by sword, by war. How? It's going to be a marvelous saving. We're going to be saved through his chariots. You know. There is a scripture in um, is this second Ezra that says um, the site of their salvation. Okay, it's uh, wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. It says the site of our salvation was a really breathtaking site, man, a wondrous site. Okay, so this 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 salvation that is coming is not going to be by us having a fighter that come and, and conquer just like the way we used to do when we had Joshua, when we had Samson and the rest. Or but King this time, David. yeah, when we had King David. This time around, the salvation is going to be a marvelous one through the chariots of Yahweh Shai, our Savior. Yeah. You know? We don't. And we not serve them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now, when she had one, Loruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Most High, call his name, Lo Ami. For you are not my people. Lo, I me. Mean, for you are not my people. 
because we stopped being the people of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. How do you stop being people of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai? By going after the, 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 the doctrines God. and strange gods of other lands. So, you know, if I pay my allegiance to someone, it means I'm under the service of that person. So Israel started paying their allegiance onto the gods of these other nations, so they became Gentiles, just like the rest of the other nations. It's simple, man. There is nothing to add to get about this. Read on. For you are not my people, and I will not be your power, your God. Okay. The Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahshai has rebuked us, and He has stopped being our power. That's why, you know, the, the enemies, they have their foot on our neck. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just like in, in today's time, you know, I remember in, in, in Nigeria when when uh, some people uh, do things to their father, you hear, I have disowned you. You are no longer my thank son. Thank you. Thank you, know, you. You are no longer my son or you are no longer my daughter. Maybe the daughter is acting or is acting strange. He's being stubborn, you know. So the father will come and disown her. Chase then, her out of the house. Then before you know, they call a meeting in the family yeah. and they speak to the man. Yeah. This is now your picking. I yeah. beg. Yeah. Take her back. Exactly. Forgive her. Forgive then he her. forgive and he takes the person back. And exactly. this this was done by our savior, Yahweh Shai. Exactly. You so know? This is what is going on here. This is the history between we and our creator, our power, our God, our husband. You know? It's a history, it's a beautiful story. We don't. You know? Verse 10. Yet the, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured, nor number. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not, the, you are not my people, there yeah, it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. Excuse me, you can't get around that, man. Yeah, man. You know, the Most High has abandoned us. You know, it says that we are numerous as the number of the sea. That's why we spread around the earth. Yep. See, let me tell you, the sons of Israel are a majority. Yep. That's what they wouldn't tell you. Because we've been mixed. We look like Indians now. We look like Chinese. We look like Japanese. We look like Edomites. We look like every, every, every people under the nation. We have we've been, been called spread everybody. all around the place. We, today, we are Americans. We are, yes, we are Nigerians. We are Nigerians. We are and, Ghana. We are Indians, okay. we are Iran, we are Saudi Arabians, we are Chinese, we are Japanese, we are Koreans, we so are everybody. You, so you see, we are no longer called by our real name, the yeah. sons of the power Israel. This is the truth. But what did he say? He says that in the this place where they were not called, in the place by, where, where they were, what's it? You are, what's it? It shall come to pass. That in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people. Just like now, we call Negroes, we call different names. Yeah. You know, we are not called the sons of the Most High. Listen. There it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. This is the mercy. So yeah. the Most High was going to reconcile again with the sons of Israel. Yeah. That's why you have those Israelites that are called Ephesians, Galatians, or whatever, Greek, Greek and all that. They are Israelites, you know, yeah. but they lost their heritage. Those are the people the Apostle Paul went to wake up. This so is why Yahashai came to die, to, 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 to say the, the new covenant again. Yahashai, John 3.16 doesn't mean, it didn't mean he come to die for everybody. No, you, get, you have to have the narrative. You need to know the mystery. He came to become that blood that Moses killed and sprinkled onto the people. It, now it was Yahweh Shai, the perfect it's sacrifice. It's a perfect sacrifice, you know, to redeem us back, back. into that covenant. Yes. So you see, <laughs> the reconciliation, the adopted. So we are going to be adopted back. It's just like you see some artists, they get into some record label, they had yeah. a deal, then they messed up. They broke the record label. Record label puts all different kinds of heavy things on them. Yeah. Just like Michael Jackson. Fine. Then they, add, they end up finding an agreement and coming back to the deal. Yep. You know? Now, to seal this up, have you finished? Have you taken all the yeah, meat yeah. out of this scripture? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Done. Let's go to the book of um, Jeremiah, the third chapter. Because you see, the most I told the sayer to get a war, you know? A prostitute. Why? That represents e um, Israel. Israel became a war. Israel became a prostitute, man. You know? And guess what? What's the judgment for a prostitute? Death. Hey, I'm sorry, an adulterer. Israel became an adulterer. That's the word I wanted to use. Sorry. You know? 
and the, the, the payment for adultery according to the law is death if anyone commits adultery. So we, Israel, we are all condemned to death because we became prostitutes. We started going after the rest of the nations, you know? Israel became a prostitute going after all the nations, committing adultery with all these nations, you know? And you see this thing of, man, it's deep, man, because we are married to the Most High Yahweh Shemi Oshai. And the word marriage means to be joined together, Kalala Yahweh Shemi Oshai. You know, we are joined together with the Most High Yahweh Bashemi Al Shai, but we breached that joining together. We became a lot. It's just like you having a wife. Then all of a sudden, your wife left you and started going to sleep with all your different kinds of people around your, your city, man. That's what is Israel did. So let's read Jeremiah 3, verse 1. They say, If a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's. Shall he return unto her again? No. And the answer is no. Okay? If a woman leaves a, a, a husband and goes to another wife, that's adultery. That man cannot receive that woman again. The payment for that sin is death. Okay? If not, Wadom is going to overtake the city. We don't. This is our law. But in today, in this government, no, they don't permit it. You see? This is why... The whole world today is what the Bible calls Antichrist. They are against the Most High and His Son. That is the true meaning of Antichrist. But people don't understand. Today, Christianity will tell you there's a man who will come, you know. No, there are, are many Antichrists, uh, man. The Antichrist means people that are against yeah, the laws the of law. our Savior, Yahweh Shai. You know, Those the, who are against our Savior, Yahweh yeah, Shai. Anti means against. You got to know the word. You got to know the meaning of wars. You know? Today, the Christianity will tell you hey, one Antichrist will come. And you shall have tribulation 7,000 years. Mm. All bullshit. 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 bullshit, man. Mm -hmm. And those bullshit. are the same people that want to argue the Bible with huh? you. You know, we don't. They say if a man puts away his wife and shall, and shall go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? The answer I said is no. Shall, shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou has played the harlot. Who has played the harlot? Israel. With many lovers, yet return again, return again to me, says the Lord. Verse 2. No, read. Read verse 8. Verse 8. And I saw, and I saw, when for all the curses, whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away. So you see, backsliding Israel, Israel is called backsliding Israel because we moonwalk, we do that moonwalk, you know, we do it really good. We did, we did make a <laughs> That moonwalk, we do it really good, man. <laughs> we backslid all the time, man. Remember we spoke about the book of Judges? of how the most high we save them then they will backslide again you know just like now we are embracing all what the new laws okay the lgbt the alphabet gang you know the people that chop off their rod and become women and all that thing you know we are backsliding reading we became adultery we read from beginning again and i saw when for all the curses whereby backsliding israel committed adultery i had put her away and giving her a bill of divorce. Okay, the most I had given us a bill of divorce. Yep. Okay, check it out. Yet, her treacherous, her treacherous sister, Judah, feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So you see, the house of Israel was broken into two. You had Israel and Judah. The house of Israel were the first to go into captivity. Those ones, they went a warring, man. They were fucking, they, they were the first people to go. Before the, uh, the house of Israel, that's what I'm saying. Before Judah now followed, you know. So Judah is a sister that is being spoken of. Yeah. Okay. No, you see, this is written in a poetic way. No. Dan. People don't understand what is going on here. This book is not without the Holy Spirit. You can't understand what is going on in this book. This is why the Christianity are bugging out. They thought uh, the book is for everybody. Ever since we have been reading this thing, does it? The, the narrative seems, seems as if it's 
for everybody? No. Now jump to the 12th verse. Verse 12. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel. And this is, this, is, this is really spiritual because the land of the north is Babylon the Great, America. And America has control, which is Babylon the Great, has control over the rest of the nation. Okay? So read on. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel. So excuse me, did the Most High say other people should return? No. He said Israel should return. Because the Most High is merciful, yep. you know, He has given us a bill of divorce, but yet He is willing to accept us back, you know. And the way this thing can be fulfilled, there needs to be someone to make this reconciliation between we and the Father. Yep. That's why in the New Testament it's been spoken of reconciliation, you know. Nice dog, man. That is a German Shepherd. You no, know, it's, it's been spoken of here, yeah, nine dog. Speak on. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return. That north, that north represents all the cities of your captivity where you find yourself today. But in a higher, to be precise, it's speaking of United States, US, okay? Because it's the land of the north. So we are all calling you back to tell you what the Most High says. Say, so We should go proclaim to you to come back. That's what the Apostle Paul went to do. Yeah. Speak on. Backsliding Israel, says the Lord, and I will not toss my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, says the Lord, and I will not keep, I will not keep anger forever. He says what? And I will not keep anger forever. The Most High will not keep anger forever against His people, yes. because this is what Christianity said that we, we fuck, we don't fucked up. Yes. Now the Most High has kept, left us for other people. How is it? How is? How does it? How does it correspond with the Bible? Is it written? That's not what the Scripture says, man. Ah, now, um, now they also prick another Scripture. That Scripture that says, um, the Most High has chosen another people over you. You know, That's that is life. speaking of the house of Judah and the house of Israel. The Gentiles. Israelites, the, the house of Israel were the first to become Gentiles. Gentiles. You know, they were not even recognized as Israelites anymore. And it was only Judah that was left. Reading according to this book, it tells you that Judah, um, Israel went a warring, then Judah, his sister, followed up. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so yep. these people that the Most High caused to jealousy to the Jews are the sons of Israel, the, the, the house of Israel that was scattered first, you know? In which we are going to address this in more, more this thing. Read on. Verse 13. Only acknowledge thy iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy power, and has scattered, and has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And you, and you have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. So you see, we have, we have scattered our ways unto all the strangers and yet become like the strangers. Okay, but yet the Most High is still telling us to come back. So that's why we're telling you to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because this time around, the Most High is going to give you a very bitter punishment at this time. He's going to receive you back, but before receiving you back, a bitter punishment first. Okay, and this is how the Most High is calling you now. Just what we are doing, telling you the truth. So if you have the ear, yeah, man, the Bible always says that he who, he who has, has the, the ear, ear, let him hear. You know, the Bible always speaks about he who has the ear, well, let him hear, yeah. man, because yep. it's not given to everybody, man. Yeah, if you have the ear to hear, you hear, good for you. But if you still want to make an argument according to your ways, not according to scripture, good to yourself. Verse 13, turn up by sliding children, says the Lord, for I am married unto you. So you see, the most high Yahweh Bashem Yahusha is married unto us. That marriage means being joined together, yep. you know. He's telling us to turn back, you know, for he is joined unto us. We are joined to the Most High Yahweh Hashem yeah. Even the Apostle Paul tells you that is the Most High going to forsake his people. He said, God forbid. You don't? Yeah. Turn, O oh, basladen children, says the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you, one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Okay, and this is literal, man. 
Yep. The most I will take one of a city. That's why you see this tube is not, it, though it is famous, it is not received by many because many are called but few are chosen. chosen. Yeah, the remnant. These the days, remnant, you know. These days it won't be like before. When we, anytime we go to captivity, Musa will bring we'll us bring all. Back. No. no. This time it's going to be the remnant, the elect. You know? Those who, who took heed to his words. Yeah, those who will hear this word and listen and say, man, yeah, no, this is true. And take heed and repent. This is the people that he's going to bring back. The other ones he's going to, man. He's going to punish them, you yeah. know. And those who call upon his true name, Yahweh, and the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, yeah. who's our mediator, okay. Yeah. It seems like it's going to rain soon. So yeah. we're going to read that. Judge, this um, last verse then yeah. to close the to close the whole thing to seal the whole thing we go to jeremiah 31 31. okay yeah verse, verse 15 and i will give you pastors according to my heart who shall feed you with knowledge so you must and understand Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, will give us pastors according to his heart just like we found the pastors who are the men the men of great millstone starting from the elder apostle Ta'a. These are the men of the most high, you know? It's not going to give you pastors according to the rest of, of the philosophies of this world. No. It's not going to give you pastors according to Islam or Christianity or Buddhism or all this BS, man. It's going to give you pastors that are going to bring you back to the remembrance of your power. It's going to give you pastors that are bring you back to the heritage, you know? Remember the name. He said he was going to give back the name. Okay, we were going to speak in, in, in the ancient language. Because without the ancient language, you can't call on the name of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Guess what? Those teachers are right here today. And we, the Most High have them in all parts of the different world, man. Yeah. You know, they're all teaching on the streets. Because the streets is where the ministry is. Yahweh Shai sent his, his, his apostles to go to the highways and the byways. He didn't send them into these dumb churches or buildings. Because the Most High does not dwell in buildings that are built with the hands of men. You should get this understanding and come out of these churches that you are before it's too late. Because there is, stop playing games, man. Stop playing. The Most High is not playing. Because you have the opportunity to listen to this truth now and you're being a nigger. You're writing different comments, coming against brothers, you know. But the time is coming. They're going to cut us off internet. We're not going to be able to give you this truth. Then when farming comes in, you know, when pestilence, hunger, then you see your ribs are coming out of your skin, then, then you remember. You remember. <laughs> <laughs> Man, let's, call, let's close it up with this. Yeah, word. this is Jeremiah 31, 31. It says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Sorry, did he say he was going to make a covenant with the world? No. He said he was going to make a new covenant with the with house of Israel. Israel. And with the house of Judah. Okay, remember I told you there was a breakaway between the house of Israel and the house of, of Judah. The Israelites became divided into two different territories. You have the northern and the southern tribe, just like I explained. So the Most High is going to is going to is going to okay make a new covenant because this covenant we broke it already, you know. And now we are in the period of grace through through our Savior Yahweh Shai. That grace is because we are under captivity. We can't put to practice all of these um, commandments. That's why it is said that we are, not, we are not going to be saved by only the laws, you know, but we are saved by the grace of our Savior, Yahweh Shai, yeah. you know. So this is the period of, of grace. It's three periods. You have the first covenant, you have the period of grace, and you have the period of the second covenant. Yeah. And that covenant, second covenant, is going to come only to the house of Israel. Yeah. Okay. When we, shall I come? When our Savior comes back, that's yeah. the new covenant. What's the new covenant going to be about? Read, brother. Thirty-two. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So, what was that covenant? It was what we read at the beginning when we, we accepted and we sealed that covenant with blood. Okay. He said not according to that covenant because that covenant was written on stone. We represent our hearts, our hearts of stone, okay? But now, the covenant is going to be written elsewhere. Listen. Kush, my covenant, they break, although I was an husband unto them, says the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law into their inward parts and write it 
in their inward, in their, in their heart, and, and we be their God, and they shall be my people. So you see, the Most High didn't say he was going to introduce other nations into the covenant. No. He said he was going to write this new covenant into our heart of flesh. Yep. Okay? And we were not writing that covenant into our heart means that we can't even we can't we can't misbehave anymore. Okay? Yeah. That is why you see when you read the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter, it tells you about those that are going to be saved. It tells you 144,000 elect and a multitude all israelites man why is he not writing a gate of heaven for the moabites a gate of heaven for the greeks a gate of heaven for this one no it tells you about the 12 tribes of israel yep. you know yep. so if you don't have anything else or if you have if you don't have anything else man we'll close on this lesson yeah, you know our battery's going down. our battery is also going down you know Hopefully this lesson was edifying to the spirit and power of the Most High Yahweh Shimei yes. You know, we're going to be doing some other shows, you know, to address those comments that I got. But this is the major thing that I wanted to bring out. You know, this is a two hour, this is a two hour and 20 minute video, you know, taking you back to the history of how the Israelites became Gentiles. Okay, so hopefully this lesson was edifying to the spirit and power of the Most High Yahweh Shimei Oshai. would like to give all praises to the Most High. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS, the ones who taught us this truth, which is the 100% truth. They love. <laughs> Peace and salutations to the hopeful legs spread around the four corners of the earth. You know, these people are really simple, man. They see you calling on the name of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, and the next thing that comes to their mind is to laugh, man. It looks so funny, you know. But the days are coming, we're going to laugh at these people. So, hey. Abad Babal Shalawam Shalawam